Right, I'm just going to explain what's going to happen now. I'm going to preach for two and a half hours. Uh, and after which we're going to have an offering and I'll preach for another two and a half hours unless it's about three and a half thousand quid. Um, no, 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 no. Um, we're not going to do that. We, I'm going to preach for a, f- a very few short minutes and we will take an offering in our final song. But please give only if you want to give or you're prepared to give. Um, we want you to understand what Christmas is all about. And I just want to take a few moments just to talk about finding Jesus. Finding Jesus. Throughout the stories that we've been uh, had read to us today, uh, individuals, people have met Jesus, haven't they? Some, all of them for the first time. Even his mother gets to meet Jesus for the first time. Joseph, his earthly father, gets to meet him for the first time. And there's a lot of angels seem to appear in these stories and a lot of people have these encounters with God that they never perhaps expected to have. And maybe you come here tonight thinking you're going to sing a few carols. But I want you to know you can have an encounter with God and never be the same again. But there were some wise men in the east and they didn't have an angel visitation. They said, we saw his star when it rose in the east and we have come to worship him. These wise men were looking for a sign. And maybe you're looking for something this evening. Maybe you're looking for something that's going to change your life. The more that we look into our world, we've been singing, you know, that the government is upon his shoulders. Aren't you glad that the government's not on Boris's shoulders? Or anybody else's shoulders? It's not about the political landscape. We are those that to believe in this church that Jesus Christ is the king of all the nations. And not only did he come the first time, but he's coming back again. And when he comes back, he's going to take his people to be with him. Some wise men have said so much about Jesus throughout the ages. I have a few quotes for you. How about this one? This is not by a Christian. This is by Mahatma Gandhi. He says this, A man who was so completely innocent offered himself as a sacrifice for the good of others, including his enemies, and became a ransom for the world. It was a perfect act. You don't get much wiser than Mahatma Gandhi and he's looking at Jesus and what Jesus did in coming into the world was an amazing thing. That he was here to take away people's sin and hurt and disappointment and to give them new life. And then Napoleon Bonaparte. I mean, he's not renowned for being a good old Christian, is he, Napoleon? But he said this, I know men. And I tell you that Jesus Christ is no mere man. Between him and every person in the world, there is an impossible term, there is no possible terms of comparison. Alexander, Caesar and myself founded empires. But on what foundation did these empires rest? Which creation of genius? Upon force? Jesus Christ founded an empire upon love. And at this hour, millions of men would die for him. You see, people have said for years and years now, church is going to die, Christianity is going to die. You need to understand, you might not see it in our nation, but there are more people following Jesus today than have ever lived in the history of this world. Thousands and thousands and thousands. There are millions of people coming to faith in Jesus in China, in India, and right across the world. Albert Einstein, I am a Jew, he says. For I am enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. Jesus is too colossal for the pen mongers, however artful. Nobody can describe Jesus how great he is. Not all people have said good things about Jesus, though. I love this one. John Lennon. Christianity will go, it will vanish and shrink. I needn't argue that I'm right and I'll be proved right. We're more popular than Jesus now, talking about the Beatles. I know we will go on, we will go first. Rock and roll or Christianity. John Lennon is dead and Jesus has still got more followers. <laughs> is that not true? He thought it was all going to be over. Listen, it's not all over till Jesus says it's over. And one day he will come with a trumpet blast and we will see him. Lennon is gone, but more people are following Jesus today than ever before. And these wise men saw a sign that led them on a journey to faith and maybe tonight God is grabbing your attention and everybody's journey of faith is a different one. You may have been brought up as a Christian, you may have known about God and been brought up in Sunday school and have accepted him for yourself. Many of us can say that, that would be true of many of us. Some in this church tonight, in fact many, are what I call a Damascus Road experience. Read about that, don't we, when when Paul gets a blinding light and he's knocked off his horse and suddenly he realises for the first time who Jesus really is. 
He thought Jesus was one thing. And then suddenly God in, meets with him and he knows Jesus is something else. He knows he's the son of the living God. He knows he's come to take away the sin of the world. He knows that he needs to give his life to him. Some people have had those kind of experiences. And you could chat to people after we go in tea and coffee and mince pies, talk to a few people. But people have had that kind of experience with God in this church. Some have responded to the gospel the first time they've heard it. Somebody stood here like I am tonight and just preached about Jesus and they said, all right, I want to follow Jesus. But there are other people who have just took weeks and months to come here on occasions, come in at Christmas, Easter, maybe thinking about Jesus on a, on an, up on a catch, but never really making a commitment. The issue tonight is not how you come to Jesus, but the fact that you come to Jesus. I don't care what it's taken you six years to get to this church. God's had his hand upon your life. And he's touching some of you even now as I speak. The wise men knew that one thing, that they were going to see a king like no other. And I just want to read you an excerpt from something called The Incomparable Christ. It's a beautiful piece of prose. I want you to listen to this as I just sum up to this evening. He's talking about Jesus. He possessed neither wealth nor influence. His relatives were inconspicuous and he had neither no formal training or education. In infancy, he startled a king. In childhood, he puzzled the doctors. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature, walking upon the waves as a pavement and hushed the seas to sleep. He healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charge for his services. He never wrote a book, yet perhaps all the libraries of the world could not hold the books that have been written about him. He never wrote a song, and yet he furnishes the themes of more songs than any other songwriters combined. He never founded a college, but all the schools put together cannot boast of having so many students. He never marshaled an army or drafted a soldier. He never fired a gun, yet no leader has no, had no volunteers or under his orders would make rebels stack arms and surrender without a shot being fired. He never practiced psychiatry, and yet he's healed more broken hearts than all of the doctors near and far. The names of the past proud statesmen of Greece and Rome have come and gone. The names of the past scientists, philosophers and theologians have come and gone. But the name of this man multiplies more and more. Though time has spread 2,000 years between the people of this generation and the mockers at the crucifixion, he still lives. His enemies could not destroy him. The grave could not hold him. He stands forth upon the highest pinnacle of heaven's glory and proclaims a proclamation of God, acknowledged by the angels, adored by the saints and feared by the devils as the risen personal Christ, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now, ordinary man, son of the living God. That's who we celebrate tonight. We're not singing about some old baby that come and went. Somebody that came and had their 30 years and was buried in a grave. And, you know, you can, you can visit about seven or eight graves in, in Israel where Jesus was buried. And about 25 places where he was born. But I know one thing. He was born and he died. And more than this, I know he was raised from the dead. And he lives forevermore. So... That's who we celebrate tonight. That's why we can sing all these things. I was, you know, oh, holy night. Some of the wonderful words I've been saying, great, you know, may, great, ma, come to, with man, with man to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. Powerful, powerful words. The Bible says this, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. God didn't come down to beat us up. God came down to stand with us. Shirley told a little story this morning. I was quite enamoured by it about the granddad who went to his, uh, grand, his daughter's house and the little lad was playing up in the play pit and the, uh, the mom forbid the granddad to pick him up and to take him out of there because he'd been so naughty. So the granddad dived in there and sat with him. That's just what Jesus did for us, isn't it, as he came into this world. He knew that what we deserved and yet he stood by us and he continues to stand by us. This Christmas, like the wise men, my prayer is that you will see your star in the east and that you will come to worship him. On the way out, we have some little New Testaments. If you haven't had a Bible or if you haven't got a Bible, we'd like you to read the story of Jesus and uh, examine the claims for yourself. Don't take what I've said tonight for granted. This is what the Bible says. We are those in this church that believe the Bible. Uh, so please take one on the way out. They're our little gift to you. But right now, would you just bow your heads in a word of prayer? We're going to ask God to just bless us this Christmas time. Maybe some of you, I'm not feeling too good tonight. Maybe 
some of you have come. I, I, I know looking around that some of you have come because I've done funerals for you over these last perhaps few months and, and years and the pain of bereavement is still there or, or the loss of a loved one. Maybe you've come tonight and you're not feeling too well physically. Maybe you've come tonight and you just need some peace in your marriage or in your relationships. Well, I just want to pray that Jesus would come and be the Prince of Peace yeah. to you right now. So would you just pray with me? Father, we just want to thank you for your love and for your goodness. We want to thank you that you sacrificed heaven's glory to be born of a virgin. That you, God Almighty, constructed yourself right down to a few embryos and were implanted in a virgin's womb. And in the darkness of those nine months, you loved us. And as you were born, you loved us. And as you, were, as you grew, you loved us. And as you served the people around and about you and told them the truth about your father, you loved us. And you died, so much, you died because you loved us. And you rose again because you love us. And you continue to love us. And so I just pray right now for those that need you so desperately that you would come to their hearts, Lord, I pray. Holy Spirit, would you convict people of their sin and bring them into a relationship with you in these moments. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.